Okay, um, 5.5 .5 now is what we are on here, 5.5, .5, and that happens to be completing the squares. So let's take a look at some examples of completing the squares. Um, first of all, when completing the squares, you got to remember the formula. And that's very simple. It's uh, b over 2 squared is the formula for completing the squares. But why do you do completing the squares? Well, very simply put, you use completing the squares when you can't factor. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 35 that add to give you um, 2? Well, in this example, you can, right? positive 7 and a negative 5. Alright, that's what you end up with. So when you separate these, what are the answers that you get? x plus 7 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0. Minus 7, you end up getting x equals negative 7. Add 5, you end up getting x equals 5. Okay, great, golden. But what if you can't factor? That's when you use that b over 2 squared. So here's how you complete the squares. First of all, whenever you're completing the squares, you get a number all by itself on one side. So you end up getting x squared plus 2x. Leave some space, and that equals 35. So here's what you do to complete the squares. To complete the squares, you take whatever b is. So in this circumstance, it's 2. So it's b over 2 squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is saying 1 squared. right? Well, what is 1 squared? 1 squared is 1. It's a positive 1. What that means is I add 1 to both sides. So I end up getting x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 36. Now, the factors for this one, the reason why you complete the squares is whatever's inside the parentheses, this number right here is your factor. So our factor is a positive 1. So you don't even have to think about it on this side. It's x plus 1 squared. That's how you always rewrite completing the squares. You write it as a squared because that's why it's called completing the squares. And the, the, the factor is whatever's inside the parentheses. That's why that's a positive 1. And that equals 36. So what does that mean? Here's the actual problem to solve now. x plus 1 squared equals 36. So we square root both sides to get x plus 1 equals plus or minus, and what is the square root of 6? 36. That is 6, sorry. So then what do we do here to get x by itself? I subtract 1 on both sides, so we end up getting x equals negative 1 plus or minus 6. Here's what that means. Negative 1 plus 6 is an answer, and negative 1 minus 6 is an answer, which means you get 5 and negative 7. Now, yes, when you factored, factoring was so much quicker and so much easier, and we got the right answer. But when you want to use completing the squares is when you cannot factor. That's when you want to use completing the squares. So my point to you is this worked great in this problem, and the reason why I chose this problem to start is so that you can see it factored and get the actual answer and see how you can also complete the squares to get the answer. That's the only reason why I did that. So yes, on this problem, you'd want to just factor it. But if you find a problem you can't factor, then you're going to want to use completing the squares. So this one, for example, might be a little more challenging. Maybe you can factor it, maybe you can't. But the point I'm getting at here is you could sit there and try to think about it, or let's not think. Let's just complete the squares. I'm going to add 60 to both sides, because according to the rules for completing the squares, I need to have numbers on one side. So i got all the numbers on one side, and the x's on the other. So it's b over 2 squared, so that's like saying 4 divided by 2 squared. And 4 divided by 2 is saying 2, so I'm looking for 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4. So that means I need to take a 4 and add a 4 to this side, and add a 4 to this side. So I end up getting x squared plus 4x plus 4 
equals 64. Whatever's in the parentheses is your factor, so that means this side is x plus 2 squared, thus the term completing the squares. That equals 64. So I can square root both sides, so I get x plus 2 equals plus or minus because I square rooted and the square root of 64 is 8. So plus 2 means I'm going to subtract 2 to get x by itself, so I get x equals negative 2 plus or minus 8. So my answers are negative 2 plus 8, which is 6, and negative 2 minus 8, which is negative 10. So I get negative 10 and positive 6 are my answers to that problem. Alright, so we will do some more completing the squares when we come back.